Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Mr. Media tutorial, I'm going to be taking you through how I like to sharpen footage to give it that extra pop, glitz, glamour, etc. Now, quick caveat before we get started, this will not bring out of focus footage back in focus. So, um, don't expect that to happen. Don't, don't try. It doesn't work. It looks bad. Just, just leave it the way it is. So without further ado, hop into DaVinci Resolve and get started. So here's this little shot. You see, I've already done a little primary grade and one thing, only thing to really take of note in this, you can see before and after just, you know, brought it to life a little bit is added a, a little bit of noise reduction beforehand because this sharpening can bring out a little bit of noise, but the shot's pretty clean. You can see, you know, everything's looking pretty good. The, yeah, there's light. It's in focus. This was shot on the Ursa Mini 4.6K in ProRes 42HQ with a Nikon, uh, the cheap 35 1.8, I, th I think G is the lens. Well, like, yeah, it's fine. It works good. And I think it was at about 1.8 in this shot. Um, but you can see it's basically in focus, but there's still a little bit of softness. This is shot at 4.6K. So we've got resolution and, and everything. So the first thing that I'm going to do besides the primary grade is I'm going to add a new node with Alt S. Then I'm going to add an OpenFX plugin called Contrast Pop. And this is a studio only plugin, but what Contrast Pop is, is basically just a more advanced version of midtone detail, which can be found under your color wheels, under the two tab, and then midtone detail. So you can easily just bring that up. And I mean, that's totally fine there if you go for that. But uh, since I've got the studio version, then in a boo boo, I'm going to use Contrast Pop. So deal with it. So what I'm going to do is hit Alt-Shift-Z again, which brings us as a one-to-one -one pixel thing. I'm going to bring the detail amount up so we can see what we're doing. See, that's way too much. See, this adds a lot of, you know, contrast, I guess, localized contrast in the midtone, just like we we're talking about before. So bring the detail size down a little bit. And you can see what this does. So bring it up, sort of smooths out stuff. Not really smooths out, but bringing the detail size up brings some more, sort of more of a, I guess, global fall off, a wider fall off bringing the detail size down sort of a more localized fall off so just bringing this way down and you can see it's making stuff look really nasty now but that's because our detail amount is set up so high so we're just going to bring it there and then we're going to bring our low threshold up which you can see if we bring it down it sharpens all that stuff down there but if we bring it up then we can start removing the hair and stuff like that and that's one of the really great things about the contrast pop control but you can emulate that with mid-tone detail just by making a selection or a qualifier just the part of the image that you want, but I'm too lazy to do that. And I'll bring the high threshold up because we will sharpen highlights a good little bit. See, bringing that down, so to start to get rid of stuff, bring it up. Oh, and that knocks our low threshold down. So basically just keep our high threshold all the way up. We're gonna throw low threshold back up to where it was. We just wanna sort of just be getting on the eyes. So there's that. I'll bring the detail amount down a little bit, just so we're popping up a little bit and then we'll blend it back in some. And the blend is basically just an opacity control. And now, right now, we're sharpening the entire image, but we just want to sharpen the part that's important. So I recommend never adding global sharpening to an image unless it's like, you know, some crazy landscape where everything's in focus. But for most stuff, you can see there's only one thing in focus. So just add a quick little window here, and we'll select your face. And if there's a bunch of movement in the shot, we would track it, but there's not, so we won't. And we'll just sort of add some fall off here. And while we're in here, I'm just going to add a little bit of contrast just for me. So to make this stand out a little bit more, so there's that. And then I'll bring the pivot down to brighten things up. All right, it's looking good. I might even bump up the gamma just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. That's nice. And now I will hit Alt-O to add an outside node, which has the inverse selection of our previous one, which we don't want. We want to go to our key tab and invert this. So now we have the same selection as the other one before. We have to do this in two nodes because it's using another OpenFX plugin. So we're going to use Sharpen. And I'm pretty sure this is available in the free version as well. Sharpening is great. You see that does way too much strike to begin with. And I like using this Sharpen control more than over here because this can get really nasty really fast. If you just add a little bit, and you can see that's some nice fine detail. That's maybe even a little bit too much. But if you go below about 0.48 or something, it starts to look really nasty. So you can see it gets it gets pretty gross pretty fast. And I see lots of things where people sharpen to about, you know, there-ish, and it's just too much you can tell. It gets this sort of like cross-hatchy pattern, especially with more compressive footage. So we can add a little bit, you know, maybe 0 0.49, 0 0.48, just since this is a tutorial where we're making things stupid sharp. Let's go 0 0.49. 
just add a little bit and now we'll turn our sharpen back on and we will bring our fine detail size way down and you see this is still doing way too much but we'll bring that down in a bit bring our fine details up some we'll keep our medium and large details down if this was a sort of more stylized shot i may bring some large details up oh, that's actually okay i'll bring that there and then I'll bring the sharpen amount way down. And I'll bring the blend up, which, like I said before, is just the opacity. And now you can see for this node before and after, it really pops out the eyes the extra little bit. And the whole thing, a whole lot more. Just, just super duper sharp. Probably too much, but you know, that's part of the fun. Bring this down a little bit more. And I'll bring this one down a little bit more. There we go. If I saw that, I think that'd be okay. Once again, Alt Shift Z. Yeah. All right. And then Shift Z back to full zoom, normal thing. Now, another great thing I like to do to help keep our focus where it needs to be is hit Alt O and create another outside node. And here I'll add a lens blur. And if you've been watching my tutorials for a while, you know how much I like to do this. I do it too much. I do it in most shots. So there's that. And four is always too much. And two is almost always exactly correct. So just drop that in there. Basically, don't even think with that. And an optional thing you can do with this, I don't think I've shown this in a tutorial yet, but you can hit Alt-O again, just like before, and invert this. If there's a keyboard shortcut for adding a node like this, let me know, because I I can't find it and I do this all the time. So nodes, there isn't anything that looks like an inside node or, or whatever. So if you know of a way to do that, let me know in the comments. It'd be much appreciated. All right. But so this node here, we will add film grain to because uh, when you add the blur to this part, that gets rid of any noise or grain in the shot, which is a great thing for denoising shots, sort of like a fake cheaty way that's faster and easier. We just have to apply denoising to your main area. But for here, since the shot's pretty clean, we can just, you know, match things up a little bit better. So add some film grain. I like to use a 35 millimeter, the standard. I like to bring the saturation all the way down and bump the grain size up just a little bit because I like big film grain. I don't know what it is. You can see grain only, so that's what we're adding in. I set to overlay, and that's just to sort of break up this bokeh in the background and make the shot feel a little more uniform. So that's that. And then one more thing we'll do to finish off the shot, just shameless self-promotion, we will add a quick little LUT from the Swiss LUTs pack. This is the LUT that I use most often. It is Cool Shadows 04. I use this a ridiculous amount. Like, why, why even bother with the rest of the 98 LUTs? Like, just use Cool Shadows 04. See, there it is. Makes a nice little tone in the image. Cools this particular one down maybe a little bit much, so we can just go ahead and warm it back up. Bring some life back in her face. And there we go. I think that looks like a gosh darn movie. We don't even need to add a vignette because, you know, I think it already looks pretty good. So there we go. Just that easy. It took a little bit of time, but I mean, you can basically just copy this stuff all around. Super good. Alt Shift Z again. You can see just ridiculously, ridiculously sharp. Just absolutely crazy. We'll make people think that you have a really nice camera. Airsa Mini 4.6K is a great camera, but it'll make people think that it costs, you know, an extra zero on the end. It'll definitely be a more expensive lens. All right. So anyway, I rambled on long enough. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to Mr. Media YouTube channel and turn on notifications because, you know, knowledge is, knowledge is good or whatever. At least it's a good excuse to, like, stop working and watch a tutorial and you can, like, eat a sandwich or something. It's great. It's great. Your boss will totally, totally be fine with it, especially if you're your own boss. We're totally fine with it. So that's, you can, you can send him a note from me that says, Theo says it's okay to watch the tutorial instead of do work. All right. Also, check out mistymedia.com slash products. You can check out the Swiss LUTs. That's my favorite thing on there right now, to be completely honest with you. House LUTs is also great. People, people like it. People use it all the time. I mean, if you want to add another little, this shot doesn't need anything, but... Uh... To drop a house let on here and just turn it way down. So I'll bring one from Rec 709. Uh, oh, Brett's Bold Day is one of my favorite ones on there. So that's way too much, but they get turned way down over here. So just add it in slowly, and there we go. That's actually pretty nice. 
Just adding a little bit of a warmer ten tinge to it. Might be a little too much. We'll bring it down a little bit more. But you see, that's what that's what these are for. Well, the Swiss lets are more of just like sediment forget him. But that's really nice. I really like what it's doing to her skin there. Yeah, we'll leave that on. Why the heck not? Buy house LUTs. Buy Swiss LUTs. Um, I won't demonstrate the light leaks or lens junk stuff because that would just be too much for this particular shot. Uh, I've rambled on a long time. So if you're still here, I mean, Happy New Year. Thanks to all the people who have stuck around 2017. 2017 has been a great year for Meissner Media. Um, I hit all the goals I had set out for this year. So yay. Uh, 2018 is going to be a great year. I'm, you know, I'm going to put more effort into the YouTube channel. So stick around. There'll be, there's some cool stuff in the works. There'll be more cool stuff coming out. Definitely leave a comment with what you want to see. I've got a product review in the pipeline of palette gear. So be ready for that. That's cool. They're neat. And also a review of new monitor I just bought. And maybe, maybe because I know no one else is, is still sticking around. I might do a little modification to it. So get ready for a really clickbaity title of like, you know, extreme mod to $1,500 color grading monitor. Don't try this at home. Kids beware. Amazing results or totally, totally broke my monitor. Uh, we'll see. Because oh, what the heck? Just keep on rambling. Because uh, it's right now it's a matte screen. I'm going to make it a shiny screen because I really hate matte screens. But everything else about this display is just gorgeous. So, you know, we'll crack it open and see what we can do. Anyway, once again, I've been Theo with Meester Media. I have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.